PSA Vauxhall slash Opel Takeover, the General Motors deal and what it means. GM's Opel and Vauxhall brands have been sold to PSA Peugeot Citroën in a £1.9 billion deal. Here's everything you need to know. PSA Peugeot Citroën has announced it has acquired GM's European arm Opel slash Vauxhall in a deal worth £1.9 billion. The announcement was confirmed at a press conference in Paris this morning. The merge now makes PSA the second largest car marker in Europe, with a market share of 17 per center putting it behind only the VW Group. Globally, PSA sold 3.5 million cars last year compared to the Opel slash Vauxhall brand's 0.8 million. The deal is expected to be completed by Q4 2017. We are proud to join forces with Opel slash Vauxhall and are deeply committed to continuing to develop this great company and accelerating its turnaround, said Carlos Tavares, chairman of the managing board of PSA. Having already created together winning products for the European market, we know that Opel slash Vauxhall is the right partner. We see this as a natural extension of our relationship and are eager to take it to the next level at press conference this morning, Tavares added this acquisition is a game changer for PSA. General Motors Chief Executive Officer Mary Barra said we are very pleased that together, GM, our valued colleagues at Opel slash Vauxhall and PSA have created a new opportunity to enhance the long-term performance of our respective companies by building on the success of our prior alliance. At the press conference the GM CEO added that the sale had been a difficult decision for General Motors but ultimately the right one. PSA and Opel slash Vauxhall, Collaboration and Economies of Scale Regarding the relationship of GM and PSA going forward, Vera revealed that the two companies could collaborate on electric vehicle and fuel cell vehicle technology, sharing the investments GM has made in partnership with Honda. By 2026 the deal could help PSA make annual savings of £1.47 billion, a proportion of this expected by 2020. Manufacturing, purchasing and R&D are the key areas where costs can be cut. PSA has promised to honor existing job guarantees at Opel and Vauxhall, though, securing jobs at least until 2021. Vauxhall to remain a true British brand. Speaking on the announcement of the deal, Opel CEO Carl Thomas Newman said Opel would have broken even in Europe in 2016 if not for Brexit. Regarding Vauxhall, he said that regardless of the deal it would remain a true British brand. Carlos Tavares previously met with Opel Vauxhall's European Works Council to discuss job guarantees and labor agreements. In a statement, the PSA Group said, PSA Group reaffirmed its commitment to respect existing agreements in the European countries. Tavares has also since met with UK's Unite Union boss Len McCluskey. The union boss said, it was a relatively positive first meeting in which MR Tavares gave assurances that current production commitments would be met. However, McCluskey added that while Tavares talked in terms of not being here to shut plants, there were still other issues, like pension plans that needed clarifying under the new ownership. Tavares was said to have made similar commitments to the UK's Prime Minister, Theresa May, whom he had a telephone conversation last week. Vauxhall Jobs Under PSA In the UK, the job guarantees imply that the production of the current Vauxhall Astra at Ellesmere Port would be guaranteed until 2021 and the Vivero van in Luton would be secure until 2025, after which the company will decide where to produce the next generation vehicles. General Motors Europe has nine plants in Europe, but despite reassurances from PSA that all will remain in operation under the French carmaker's ownership, experts still believe that for PSA to make a profit from the acquisition it would have to cut jobs and production in Europe, which they state is at overcapacity. John Colley, a professor at Warwick Business School said PSA has little choice but to close the UK Vauxhall plants to make the Opel acquisition work, as the cost of cutting jobs at the German plant would be far higher. However, 
not all share such pessimism. Daryl Reese, professor of motor industry economics at Cardiff Business School told Auto Express that Vauxhall's Ellesmere port and Luton plants are some of the most efficient in Europe, and PSA would surely value this over any uncertainty associated with Brexit, or other geographical factors. UK's biggest union asks government to guarantee jobs. The UK's biggest union, Unite, has called for the government to grant Vauxhall similar post-Brexit assurances it promised Nissan, which prompted the Japanese carmaker to continue production at its Sunderland site, protecting over 7,000 jobs in the process. Unite boss, Len McCluskey met with business secretary Greg Clark and asked the government to guarantee Vauxhall similar assurances in order to protect jobs at the two UK plants. McCluskey said, the important thing for us is to get the government engaged so that we can defend British jobs. Clark has since met with PSA executives and promised the government's unbounded commitment to protect jobs at Vauxhall. PSA the group behind Peugeot, Citroën, and DS Cars already has dealings with Opel and is currently supplying the GM brand with components. For instance, the upcoming Vauxhall Grandland X, a new C-segment SUV headlining Vauxhall's SUV boom, will sit on a PSA platform. It'll get the EMP2 architecture underpinning the Peugeot 3008 and 5008 models, and could event be built at Peugeot's factory in Sachaz, France, alongside those two models. Analysis, who stands to gain what from the PSA slash Opel deal? General Motors and PSA claimed at the press conference announcing the sale that the deal is a win-win for both companies. But how can this be so? GM's situation is relatively simple, the firm gets shot of a division that has failed to make any money since the turn of the millennium and it rids itself of uncertainty over how its European setup could and would work post-Brexit. This, in turn, will allow GM to focus on areas where it can see real opportunities for straightforward growth, its domestic market, the United States, and China. PSA's reasoning is more complex. It's hard to see how it will have need of the new structure's 24-odd factories across Europe, not least because Opel's and Vauxhall's plants have had spare capacity for years. But there are potential gains in even greater economies of scale, as PSA stretches components, platforms, engines, and transmissions across an even wider range of models. Perhaps the most significant reason is that the deal could allow PSA to stop being a French car company and start being a European one. Buyers in Germany or Eastern Europe who simply refuse to consider even the idea of a French car may soon be offered Opals containing quite a bit of Peugeot or Citroën technology. And if they carry on buying them, then Tavares's gamble could pay off handsomely, especially if he's managed to squeeze out a bit more profit margin on each vehicle in the meantime. And British customers? Expect some frenzied market research from PSA into whether we're hung up on the idea of buying a Vauxhall or open to the prospect of having an Opel badge on the fronts of our Astras and courses as we move into the middle of the next decade. The new owner is sounding very conciliatory at the moment, but PSA's recent history shows that if it ultimately does judge Vauxhall to be complexity that it doesn't need, it won't think twice to strike a line through it on the balance sheet.